Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Master Economics. In this video, today I am going to tell you about an important concept of international economics that is the hexshear ohlin theorem. Please note that this video has been re-uploaded in this channel as my other YouTube channel that is Ars Expert has been deleted due to unknown reasons and this video had been uploaded in that channel. So please do see this video in this channel. Now without any further ado, let's begin the video. Introduction Bertil Oehlin in his famous book Interregional and International Trade criticized the classical theory of international trade and formulated the general equilibrium theory. In fact, it was Eli Heckscher, Oehlin's teacher who first propounded the idea in 1919 that trade results from differences in factor endowments in different countries and Oehlin carried it forward to build the modern theory of international trade. Now let us know the other names for the HO theory. The Heckscher oehlin theory is also known by other names such as the factor endowment theory, modern theory of international trade, factor proportions theory, general equilibrium theory and the Heckscher oehlin theorem. Now let us see what the theory states. The HO theory states that the main determinant of the pattern of production, specialization and trade among the regions is the relative availability of factor endowments and factor prices. Regions or countries have different factor endowments and factor prices. Some countries have much capital, others have much labor. The theory now states that countries that are rich in capital will export capital intensive goods and countries that have much labor will export labor intensive goods. To Oehlin, the immediate cause of international trade is always that some commodities can be bought more cheaply from other regions, whereas in the same region, the production is possible at high prices. Thus, the main cause of trade between regions is the difference in prices of commodities based on relative factor endowments and factor prices. Now, let us see the assumptions of the HO theory. The HO theory is based on the following assumptions. The first assumption is, it is a 2 by 2 by 2 model. That is, there are two countries, namely A and B, two commodities, X and Y, and two factors of production, say capital and labor. The second assumption, there is perfect competition in commodity as well as factor markets. Then, the third assumption, there is full employment of resources. Then the fourth assumption we have is production is influenced by law of constant cost. Then commodities differ in factor requirements and countries differ in factor endowments. That is the natural factors of production. Then the sixth assumption we have is state of technology remains unchanged. Then there is perfect mobility of factors of production within a country but immobile internationally. Then the 8th assumption we have is there is free and unrestricted trade between countries. Then there are no factor reversals that is if a good is capital intensive it will be the same it can't reverse with other factors. Then the 10th assumption we have is production function differs between commodities but are the same in both the countries. Then there is, incom there is incomplete specialization that is no country specializes in the production of one commodity. Then the twelfth assumption we have is there are no transportation costs. Then the last assumption we have here is taste and preferences of consumers are same in both the countries. Explanation of the theory. According to the HO theory, the main determinant of the pattern of production, specialization and trade between countries is the relative availability of factor supplies. According to the theory, some countries have much capital others have much labor. The theory says that countries that are rich in capital will export capital intensive goods and the countries that have much labor will export labor intensive goods. This gives more importance to factor endowments and it is its main determinant as it leads to international trade. Now they are based on two factors countries that differ in factor requirements and countries that differ in factor endowments. The immediate cause of international trade according to the theory is the difference in relative commodity prices which is caused by differences in relative demand and supply of factor that is factor prices consequent on differences in factor endowments between two countries. 
thus the theory maintains that basically the relative scarcity of factor shortages of supply in relation to demand is essential for trade between two countries it means commodities which use large quantities of scarce factor are imported because their prices if domestically produced would be higher than if they are imported and commodities using relatively abundant factor are exported because the domestic prices are low and the prices in foreign markets are high thus if capital is relatively abundant and therefore relatively cheaper in country a and the same is true of labor in country b then country a will specialize in and export capital intensive goods and country b will specialize in and export labor intensive goods now we can see a diagram that is a flow chart where we can see the difference in commodity prices leads to differences in comparative cost which leads to difference in factor prices and then which that leads to difference in factor endowments and which leads to the international trade and then the next diagram we can see that the capital abundant country that is for example USA gives away or exports the capital intensive goods to the labor abundant country that is for example india and india in return exports the labor intensive goods to the capital abundant country how to define this abundance in the ho theory there are two ways or terms to define the factor abundance they are factor price definition and the physical definition factor price definition definition this is in terms of the rented price of capital and the price of labor time in each nation the physical definition is this is in terms of overall amount of capital and labor available to each nation according to the definition in terms of physical units nation a is capital abundant if the ratio of the total amount of capital to the total amount of labor available in nation a is greater than that in nation b then according to the definition in terms of the factor prices nation a is abundant if the ratio of the rental price of capital to the price of labor time is lower in nation a than in nation b country a is capital abundant compared to country b country b is labor abundant hence the countries a and b should produce which ever is cheaper to them therefore we get the equation kp by lp of country a is lesser than the kp divided by lp of nation b where k is the capital l is labor p is factor price a and b stands for the two countries respectively this uh, theory can be shown with the help of a diagram in the above diagram labor is measured on x axis and capital is measured on y axis here x is the capital intensive commodity and y is the labor intensive commodity in the diagram x x is the isoquant of commodity x and y y that of commodity y they are the same for both the countries a and b the relative factor prices in country a for both the commodities are given by the factor price line a a1 assuming that each isoquant represents one unit of the respective commodity then one unit of y will be produced with oc amount of capital and od amount of labor at point e where the iso cost line aa1 is tangent to the iso quant yy by the same reasoning we find that the cost of producing one unit of commodity x in country a is om amount of capital and on amount of labor since capital is abundant and cheap in country a it will specialize in the production of the capital intensive commodity y this is clear in the figure where in order to produce one unit of y it uses more amount of capital oc with od amount of labor at point e on the iso quant yy while at the point l on the iso quant xx it uses less amount of capital om with more amount of labor on in order to produce one unit of x hence country a will produce and export the relatively capital abundant and cheap commodity y to the other country b in order to find the cost of producing one unit of each commodity in country b where labor is relatively cheap and abundant 
a price line b b3 tangent to the isoquant y y at point g is drawn a similar factor price line b1 b2 is drawn parallel to b b3 which is tangent to the isoquant excess at point es now it requires ok amount of capital and oh amount of labor to produce one unit of commodity y in country b and ot amount of capital and or amount of labor to produce one unit of commodity x in this country since labor is cheap and abundant in country b it will specialize in the production of labor intensive commodity x so it will produce commodity x at point s on the isoquant xx which requires more amount of labor or with less amount of capital ot than commodity y which requires less amount of labor oh with more amount of capital ok at point g on the isoquant yy hence country b will export commodity x to country a in exchange for commodity y this establishes the ho theorem that the capital abundant country will export the relatively cheap capital intensive commodity and the labor abundant country will export the relatively cheap labor intensive commodity hence when the two countries a and b are compared then country a should specialize in commodity x and country b in commodity y now let us see the criticisms of the ho theory the ho theory has been criticized on the following grounds first it is a 2 by 2 by 2 model oilin has been criticized for presenting a 2 by 2 by 2 model based on the, an over simplified assumption then the second criticism we have is it is a static theory like the classical theory this model is also static in nature it does not give any indication about how the economy would develop if production conditions were to change then the third criticism we have is factors not homogeneous the theory assumes the existence of the homogeneous factors in the two countries which can be measured for calculating factor endowment ratios but in reality no two factors are homogeneous qualitatively between countries and even one factor is of various types then the fourth criticism we have is taste and demand patterns are not identical this assumption implies that the taste and demand patterns of consumers are the same for different income groups this is unrealistic then no constant returns the assumption that there are constant returns to scale is also not realistic because a country having rich factor endowments often obtains the advantages of economies of scale through lesser production and exports thus there are increasing returns to scale rather than constant then we have partial equilibrium analysis Professor Harberler criticizes this theory for the failure to develop a comprehensive general equilibrium concept. He regards the HO theory a partial equilibrium analysis. Then the seventh criticism we have is transport costs do not influence trade. This is also an unrealistic, unrealistic assumption. Along with transport costs, loading and unloading of goods and other port charges affect the prices of produced commodities in the two countries. When transport costs are included, they lead to price differentials for the same commodity in the two countries, which affect the trade relations. Then, the eighth criticism we have is production techniques are not homogeneous. Production techniques are different for the same commodity in two countries. For example, textiles may be produced with hand looms which require more labor and less capital or with highly sophisticated power looms requiring a small number of workers. In such a situation, the trade may not follow the theory. Then we have factor prices do not determine commodity prices. Critics hold that the prices of commodities are determined by their utility to the consumers and that the prices of raw materials and labor are ultimately dependent on the prices of the final commodities. They maintain that the right approach is to start with commodity prices rather than the factor prices. Then the last criticism we have here is unrealistic assumption of full employment and perfect competition. There is neither full employment nor perfect competition in any country of the world.
Hence, we can conclude the H.O. theorem by saying that, despite these criticisms, the H.O. theory of international trade is definitely an improvement over the classical theory, as it attempts to explain the basis of international trade in the general equilibrium setting. That's all for today's video. I hope you have understood the concept and liked the video. Please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative videos. Thank you for watching.